some people seem to think some of these YouTube comments hurt our feelings. The only thing hurting are my ears after listening to Ford Barrett. <laughs> If you haven't seen these yet, these are our new LS stickers in colour. They're yeah. a bumper sticker, so they're a cutout, obviously. Perfect for your LS conversion, Commodore, Tirana, whatever you got. Get on them. They're available in our shop, uh, shop.fullboost.com.au. So is uh, our merch, as you can see I'm proudly wearing tonight. We've also just got a new uh, shipment of t-shirts, hoodies, and some new beanies, some new beanies mm. which hopefully by the time you see this, we'll actually, you'll, you'll have updated our shop. Yeah, maybe. Are you guys identical twins or gay lovers on the same menstrual cycle? In he comes. Oh, he's got him! To have a look at this poor bloke, the valet, I just don't know how this happens. All he had to do was move the car. As tricky parking spots go, it doesn't get much tighter than this. A $300,000 Porsche Carrera sandwiched underneath an orange SUV outside the Hyatt Regency on Sussex Street. Now I have found the footage. We tracked down the uh, CCTV and he was having a bit of a play in the car park. And when interviewed, This bloke from GM took the reins of driving the pace car at an Indy race. First of all, he had to convince his colleagues that he was going to do a job, because it is a pretty, very, or well, it's a very important job. Let me drive. I won't make a fool out of you. Uh oh, this is going to hurt. Did you see that guy? Well, obviously, driving a pace car in a, in a field of, you know, race cars, you got to drive pretty damn fast, but still. you got to drive a lot faster than what it looks like you're going on TV. Yeah. But uh, let's just say the GM board weren't too impressed after this display. What do we do? We end up looking like a monkey fucking a football out there. I'm watching this video and I'm thinking, how is this actually going to end well? Back up a little bit. Back up! Yeah, I don't know, this this rock, how big is it, you reckon? It's like, well, like a metric ton. Watch out, leaf springs are gonna shoot out the side. How is he gonna get this rock back out of the ute once it got in there? You can't just, just get in there and just push it out. I yeah, mean, the thing probably pushing. weighs three or 400 kilos or something. Roll the bucket, there you go. Jesus Christ! So you did a video recently on a 900 horsepower small block Ford and out came the experts as to what a small block actually is. Oh yeah, let's start. I always laugh when I hear massive engine like 461 referred to as a small block. Four cylinders and rotaries are small block. This thing is mammoth. Four cylinders are a small block. And it would be embarrassing if it didn't make this kind of power. 8,250 RPM. They seem to have employed the dark arts. Who lost their soul in this deal? It's not impressive. The engine is massive. It's more impressive to see a small engine make this power and more, which they do all the time. How many uh, 900 horsepower NA four cylinders have you seen? Just go down to the Honda meet. Yeah, just everywhere. Full Boost once had a motto, when cubes just aren't enough, we still have that motto by the way. Now they push this dinosaur technology, it's not boosted, so why run it on Full Boost? I don't know about you, but I don't think we've ever run an NAV8 video ever. Yeah man, yeah nah nah. That, why, why an engine's old? Well it doesn't matter. Yeah but this guy's missed the whole point of the video. This is old dinosaur junk technology, and it's making 900 horsepower and pump unleaded. Pump unleaded. That's the whole Not point. Fancy of it. fuels, yeah. no boost. You haven't got twin cam heads. You haven't got all the you know latest and greatest direct injection. It's just all junk, and you're making power. But that's not impressive. No, not impressive. You know what is more impressive? A uh, Ferrari. It's not crazy because Ferrari have been getting over 100 horsepower per liter. 100 horsepower per liter 
for a long time. The formula is there, it's a matter of people following it. They were making 605 horsepower out of a 4.5 litre V8. Yeah, no worries, let's compare the resources of Ferrari to this. And there's never any mention of torque, power under the graph. Everyone just looks at, oh, Ferrari or something made 600 horsepower, yeah. No, this doesn't, ha this doesn't make any power under the graph. Listen, you're not listening. No power, no torque. Not from a eight and a half liter engine. No, same as same as it's been forever. Revs, displacement, or both. This would be a pig to drive at twenty six hundred RPM. Hang on, an eight and a half liter is going to be a pig to drive. Yeah, it's four hundred and sixty one cubic inches. It's barely going to pull a caravan. He's burning a bit rich. This bloke's actually right, you know. I found some footage of this engine on the street. My V6 probably makes more torque at 2600 RPM than this thing does. It most likely doesn't come alive till at least 4000 RPM and nothing serious under 5000 RPM. 8.5 litre is not going to be doing anything under 5000 RPM. Everybody should drop their ego and just respect and enjoy other people's cars no matter what the engine is. Grow up, you're supposed to be adults. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. <laughs> How's this Nissan RB from the Rigoli plant making 2,000 horsepower? In a 300ZX, so it's a pretty unique drag car. This happened last week, Jet Racing, based out of Queensland, um, and now officially the quickest four-cylinder drag car in the world. Yeah, that's impressive. They run a compound, so hang on, fastest four-cylinder in the world, you'd have to expect it to be some sort of uh, really high-tech, like, Subaru Boxer engine? Yeah, not quite. It's a um, compound turbo billet 4G63, so that's, if you don't know what that code means, it's a Mitsubishi Evo-based engine, with well, a design anyway. There's, only, there's they, not really much Mitsubishi left in it, but... What did they run? Uh, a 626 at 229. <laughs> 626-229. Speaking of four cylinders, this thing's pretty cool. It's a Hemi four cylinder. It's basically, well, it's a V8 cut in half. So it just makes a lazy 1942 horsepower. It's an eight valve push rod, single turbo engine. It's all 4.3 liters. Yeah, so it's generally hard, double the size of obviously most four cylinders you see yeah. racing. Right, running about 55 pounds of boost and they rev it to 8,800 RPM. It'd make a lot of torque. Now they ran this car on the weekend and it just ran 658 at 218. It's in, it's in a Ford. Just like a Ford, you know, pro mod type car. Oh. It's always pretty tough overtaking on the highway when you can't really see what's coming the other way. So the best thing to do is just to get an absolute A grade nugget. I'm talking what a 1.3 litre auto. 80 kilowatts max, load it up with about five people, then sit behind a road train. So weave in and out, have a look, look to see if you can get around this truck and then just go for it. Just bury it. <laughs> There's nothing like getting a cheap job, but this is the real definition of a love job.
to the same manufacturers won the International Engine of the Year for the third year running. Okay, so what, what series LS engine was it? Almost as powerful as an LS, it was a, um, it's a 3.9 litre twin turbo Ferrari engine. V8 that makes around 700 horsepower, so 700 horsepower. So that's sort of similar to like say a wrecking yard Ford Barra, $29 engine with a tuner. <laughs> wow, another VL turbo. What a surprise! I don't know why people like them. I love people like this, who hate a particular type of car, and then click on said video of a particular type of car, and then bag it out. It's like, what? I remember there was once a comment on a video, we titled, we titled it LS1 Limiter Bashing or Smashing or something, and the first comment that came in was, I can't stand listening to LS's on the Limiter, they sound shit. <laughs> yeah, come on, how can they sound shit? This is something I actually saw on Facebook to do with uh, mounting turbochargers, i.e. a low mount or, or low a mount 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 or a high mount manifold. Mount. Now usually most cars that make a lot of power use a high mount manifold, meaning the turbo is at the top generally for space. It's easier to fit a turbo up here than it is you know, down between the chassis rail and engine. Hmm. But I did see some uh, pretty definitive info about why a low mount is actually better. The engine engineering explained. Yeah, yeah, this is full engineering explained. We just need the whiteboard now. Because when you've got a low mount, obviously gravity, you know, moves down. So it's easier to push something down than it is up. Imagine if all the drag cars got their turbos and put them down. They, they, could, could, they could cut seconds off. Yeah, yeah, probably three, four hundred horsepower just putting that turbo down the bottom. Well, the engine's not working as hard because it's pushing down, but not. Yeah, yeah, the gravity just pushes that exhaust gas down. I know I'm a bit late to the party on this, but I finally watched that uh, TV series on Netflix called The Fastest Car. Fastest Car or The Fastest Car, whatever it's called. The adrenaline rush history racing is insane. Every car has its own unique feeling. But money doesn't always win. I actually wrote a few notes here because I'd never remember it. And for those who haven't seen it, they basically put three sleeper cars up against a supercar in each episode. And then after the seven episodes, they all run together in one big drag race. So it's a pretty cool idea, and it's really well shot. I, I really, I haven't seen much of it, but the sleepers don't really look all that sleeperish. Yeah, they haven't. They, they don't really have the same <laughs> idea of a sleeper as what we'd have here. <laughs> like some of them, it's obvious it's a performance. Oh car. yeah, Th there's, I don't think there's one car you look at and go, yeah, that's a sleeper. Every one of them, you just look at it and go, yeah, it's an old car, hot it up. It's pretty obvious it's hot it up. So the term the sleeper, I don't know why they. It's a, it appears anything over there, if you start with a crap car, it's does then it, known as a sleeper. It doesn't matter if it's got exhaust pipes hanging out of the bonnet. But it's, it's supposed to look stock. Mm. Yeah, they don't quite get that, but anyway. Yeah, but anyway, it's, it's a really well shot, mm. shot show. I really liked it, but um, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, so maybe look away now. But anyway, the final, they run it. You'd think they'd run it on, a, on an aircraft strip, maybe? Well, any kind of concrete or bitumen or yeah. actual hard surface a tyre can actually grip. You've got to remember, a lot of these cars, some of them are like full-on radial V8 type cars. Where do you think they're going to run them? In the desert. Oh, so a racetrack in the desert? Yeah, um, racetrack, well, if you call a um, just dirt, yeah, racetrack. So you've got radial tyres and you, you've got to drive on dirt. So obviously in the final, two supercars made it through. One of them's an all-wheel drive Lambo. Do you think he's going to have any troubles taking off on dirt compared to, uh, gee, I don't know, some dude in a front-wheel drive Colt, I think it is, Mitsubishi? Oh, it's, I think it's called a Mirage here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you're watching the final, and this is like, gee, this is, uh, I, I just can't work out who's going to win. The bloke wins by about 100 metres. That's true. And he's driven the car like once. Even he said it's just a computer game launch control. It's a good idea, but the final just the final episode is the biggest letdown. But that aside, look, I hope they do another se mm. season because I like the premise and some of the characters are pretty good. My favourite character was, I think his name was Jarvis. He had a van, nitrous van. He was just an honest, cool dude, old dude. A lot of them are real hotheads. They're so up themselves in terms of they think they've got all this power. It's typical drag racing's easy. I'll just put some tyres on my car and I'll beat everyone. Every one of them just failed. 
Mm. Everyone. I don't know if anyone else has ever said this to you, but you two both look like a person on the show The Blacklist. The Blacklist? I don't know what this guy's talking about. 